Our estimated flight time today will be three days. Future passengers of the world's longest aircraft, Airlander 10, won't get to their destinations quickly, but they will surely do it in style. Nicknamed the Flying Bum for its unconventional exterior, this plane will feature plush ensuite bedrooms, an onboard altitude bar, and glass flooring with horizon to horizon views. Airlander 10 won't even need an airport. It can take off and land from any flat surface, be it land, sand, water, or ice, using pneumatic skids. It will also be friendly to the environment with less emissions and is supposed to become the safest form of air travel. This 300-foot-long engineering marvel is part airship, part helicopter, and part plane. Other aircraft use one of the various methods to maintain flight, buoyancy, vertical thrust, or lift. Blimps, helicopters, and planes mostly rely on buoyancy, vertical thrust, and lift respectively. But our bum plane incorporates all three of these principles. First comes buoyancy. Airlander uses a massive amount of helium, a material less dense than air. It helps aircraft like blimps and zeppelins take off, just like how a helium-filled balloon ascends. And because helium is buoyant on its own, our hero can float effortlessly. Airlander stores its helium in several compartments for safety and also has four 325-horsepower engines and requires way less power compared to conventional aircraft, like the Boeing 787, which makes it more energy efficient. But this buoyant aircraft is limited in payload, up to 10 tons. Its constructors could make the hull bigger to place more helium in it, but our plane is already the bulkiest in the world, so that would be too much. To help with this, the Airlander 10 is equipped with two vertical thrusters, like those on helicopters. They direct the air downwards, lifting the aircraft. And then there's lift, which plays a crucial role in the aerodynamics of flight. To get lift, you need air zipping over and around the wing, creating a force. Even though the Airlander might not have monster engines like a big jetliner, its huge hull gives plenty of space for air to do its thing and help it lift off. This unique hybrid aircraft has run several successful test voyages, so you can consider it a real thing. It will be a customizable transformer, good for passenger travel, cargo transport, extended flight operations, or scientific goals. Some of its configurations will be able to stay in flight for up to five days without stopping. It could be really useful for research missions. And the designers plan to build an even bigger Airlander 50 with a capacity of 50 tons of payload. In the early days of aviation, there were no computer simulations to test the design, so there were some pretty crazy plane models built. Italian designer Gianni Caproni wanted to create an aircraft to transport 100 passengers across the Atlantic with comfort and style. His brainchild, Ka-60, had nine wings arranged in three sets of three. It had eight engines, all serviced by mechanics in flight. There were panoramic windows along both sides of the long cabin for passengers sitting in two wide rows to enjoy the views of the world below. It had a rounded nose, an integral flight deck, and a streamlined seaplane hull. Once the plane was finished, the pilot was doing test runs on Lake Maggiore to balance the hydroplane. Then, there was probably a boat in its path, or the pilot went too fast, and the plane took off when it wasn't supposed to. It broke up. By the time Caproni arrived at the lake, the pilot had been rescued, but trying to pull the wreckage out only made things worse. So, the plane never got to cross the Atlantic. The French engineers went even further and designed a plane with a body modeled after birds and named it Duck. It was supposed to have a steam engine to power a single tractor propeller to the front of its rotund body. The pilot and landing gear were supposed to be attached by cables and frame underneath the body. This weirdly looking aircraft had an official name, but everyone remembered it as the Flying Pancake because of its saucer-like shape. This design was supposed to make it possible to land and take off in tight areas where regular planes can't fit. The prototype was a success with low takeoff and landing speeds, and the disc-shaped design helped generate lift. The engineers received funding for an improved version, but it came with flaws. When they were corrected, there was no longer a need for this quirky plane. German aeronautical engineer Alexander Lippisch came up with the Aerodyne. It looks like the rear part of an airplane after cutting the whole thing in half, but it could fly on its own. 
It was considered a vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, the same group as helicopters. It combined lift and thrust using a single unit and flow channel, like a ducted fan. Flaps at the end of the fan would divert the outflowing air. The first Dornier Aerodyne flight took off in 1972. Even though it was a success, the authorities lost interest in it and shelved the project. The Pregnant Guppy, also known as Frankenplane because it was made of parts of other airplanes, has helped NASA on its way to the moon. Back in the 1960s, they had a problem shipping rockets from the west coast to Cape Canaveral in Florida. Taking them by water through the Panama Canal took two to three weeks and fragile parts came dented and corroded. And that's when John Conroy came up with a solution. His friend had Boeings he had bought but didn't find use for them. Conroy decided to modify the planes by adding a larger cargo bay on top of the fuselage. He didn't receive funding from NASA for his idea, but he never gave up and mortgaged his own house, sold his car, and invested all his savings into his project to prove it would work out. He borrowed the fuel to fly the prototype to Alabama. The plane flew perfectly and impressed everyone. The Super Guppy, as they started calling it, was successfully transporting rocket stages for NASA's Gemini program. Conroy built a total of 25 modifications of his aircraft to fit even larger and heavier equipment. The Edgley Optica EA-7 might look like a funky, futuristic dragonfly aircraft, but it was designed in the mid-70s for low and slow surveillance or sightseeing missions. It features a helicopter-like cockpit mounted ahead of a ducted fan motor and an impressive 270-degree field of view. Its large ducted fan was running quietly inside and outside the cockpit. It gained renewed interest in the 21st century for border patrol, wildlife management, and fire spotting missions. But because of lack of funding, there were only five out of the 22 built aircraft remaining airworthy worldwide. Have you ever seen a plane with two fuselages of differing sizes? The Rutan Model 202 Boomerang stands out as a multi-engine aircraft built this way to minimize the risks of engine failure. Unlike conventional planes, even if one of its engines were to malfunction, the Boomerang remains easily controllable thanks to its innovative design, which effectively manages asymmetric thrust. This design makes the Boomerang faster and more efficient. This plane was never designed for commercial use, but as a private plane for up to five people. You can tell that this short sky van was built for practical purposes without caring too much about aesthetics, just by looking at it. And that's how this general purpose aircraft got its nicknames like Flying Shoebox and The Shed. Despite all the mocking, the sky van has served well over the years. It's been around since its first flight in the 1960s, still transferring cargo and passengers today. It can seat 19 people and has a van-like large rear door for loading and unloading freight. That's why it's perfect for short-haul flights, activities like skydiving, and much more. We'll start our top 10 with the smallest plane in the world, the Star Bumblebee. It was built specifically to set a world record and get this title. Its wingspan uh. is smaller than the average person's height, and the length of the plane is the same as a regular sedan. But this baby can surprise you. Its maximum speed is similar to a supercar, 190 miles per hour. Still, it has only risen in the air a few times, and it even had to make an emergency landing. But no one was injured, and the restored plane was given to a private collection. By the way, the cost of building one star bumblebee was about $10,000. So it was really a regular sedan among the planes one that could only carry one person. Next on the list is a Cessna 172. This airplane is also a record breaker. Not for its size this time, but for the number of built units. To date, more than 45,000 aircraft have been built, and it remains in production since 1956. As for its size, its length can be compared with the length of a limousine, and the wingspan is a little less than a school bus. Far fewer people can board it, though. Only the pilot plus three passengers. In 1959, this aircraft set a world record for the duration of a refueling flight. Two pilots took off at a Las Vegas airport 
and landed there in 64 days, 22 hours, and 19 minutes. Without refueling, the latest Cessna model can fly 800 miles. It's like the distance from San Francisco to Las Vegas and back. We move on to larger and more powerful aircraft, Embraer Legacy 600. It's slightly longer than a subway car, but much more comfortable. Figures. After all, it's a private aircraft worth $25 million. But if you want one, then be prepared to pay an additional $500,000 to $1 million a year just for plane maintenance. Now this plane is similar to a beluga whale in its shape. Actually, that's what it's called. Airbus A300-600ST Beluga. It's designed to carry aircraft parts and external cargo. It's also transported space shuttles. It looks like a mother airplane carrying her baby. Beluga was the one who transported the Columbus module for the ISS. Its length is like two baseball fields and almost the same wingspan. Its cargo bay is so big that it can easily accommodate the fuselage of another plane. Amazingly, it only takes two people to fly such a huge machine. But despite the size of its cargo compartment, Beluga can lift no more than 47 tons, or 30 hippos, whatever they prefer on board. Its cost is about 180 million euros. It's almost like a fleet of 600 Cessnas. Boeing 787 Dreamliner. It's one of the most efficient aircraft in the world. This airplane holds the record for the longest flight without refueling. In March 2020, it flew from Papiete to Paris. The plane flew without landing for almost 16 hours and covered a distance of over 9,700 miles. This is like the distance from New York to Los Angeles four times. The cost of this big guy is estimated at $300 million. This is like 30 of the most expensive Rolls Royces or 30 million cinema tickets. Hughes H-4 Hercules. This is actually a flying boat, and it was made of wood. It's the biggest flying boat ever built, and it had an enormous wingspan, 321 feet. To get this thing in the air, eight propeller engines were used, each with 3,000 horsepower. And even though this water monster was built in 1947, it could lift more cargo than the modern Airbus Beluga. Hercules could lift a weight of 59 tons. That's like a modern tank, or about 30 SUVs. But originally, it was built to transport about 750 people at a time. Still, the payload and maximum speed of this aircraft remain an issue. This wooden guy has only made one flight in its life. It climbed to a height of about 65 feet and flew 1.2 miles above Los Angeles Harbor. Despite this, engineer Howard Hughes kept this monster in working condition for almost 30 years, spending about $1 million per year. Airbus A380. This is the largest passenger plane in the world. It has two decks and can accommodate about 850 passengers. It's like a population of a small village, all on board one airplane. To accommodate this many passengers, it has an impressive size. Its length is almost as much as a soccer field, as is its wingspan. And its height is more than a seven-story building. On top of all this, the Airbus can travel incredible distances without refueling. It can take off in Iceland and land on the tip of South America. The only disadvantage of A380 is its price, $445 million. With this money, you can buy four private islands in the British Virgin Islands. A Saudi prince once bought one of these and modified it into a private aircraft. Now, it looks like an expensive mansion or hotel inside. It has become the largest and most expensive private jet. It's estimated to cost about $500 million. Oh, and by the way, just to take off, this giant needs a runway of almost 10,000 feet. So not all airports in the world can take an Airbus A380. Scaled Composites Model 351 Stratolaunch. An unusual name for an aircraft. 
but its appearance is even more bizarre. This aircraft bears the title of the longest wingspan in aviation history of all time, 385 feet. This is more than the length of a soccer field, plus a limousine. The pilot, co-pilot, and flight engineer are in the right fuselage cockpit. The cockpit of the left fuselage is used as a storage unit. Six powerful engines help this giant take off, and eight racks with a total number of 28 wheels help the big guy to land. Stratolaunch was designed to launch Pegasus rockets from it, but now it's going to be used to launch hypersonic flights. Well, whatever its purpose, pilots will have to be careful because so far there's only one Stratolaunch Model 351 in the world. Jumbo Jet, or Boeing 747. This is the world's first long-haul double-deck aircraft. This baby held the title of the heaviest and most capacious aircraft for 36 years until Airbus A380 appeared. Its wingspan is more than the length of a hockey field, and its length is 250 feet, which is equal to the height of 15 giraffes. This aircraft set a record for the number of passengers on one flight. During a rescue operation in Ethiopia, there were 1,086 people on board the 747. This plane was also used to transport the President of the United States, or his First Lady. In this case, the aircraft was assigned a call sign Air Force One or Air Force One Foxtrot. And the cargo version of this plane was used for transportation of the space shuttle from reserve airfields to the place of its launch at Cape Canaveral. Antonov AN-225 Maria is the heaviest aircraft ever built. It also has the largest wingspan of any aircraft in operational service. The distance between the tips of its wings is almost like the length of a soccer field, and its body length is 275 feet. This is like six school buses in a row. Naturally, it's a power lifter among planes. In 2009, Antonov was listed in the Guinness Book of Records for lifting the heaviest monocargo in aviation history, 187 tons. That's like 1,000 of the smallest aircraft in the world, the Star Bumblebee, or four Boeing 737s. But the absolute record for Antonov's lifting capacity is 253 tons. This is like half the tallest building in the world, the Burj Khalifa. Well, the records of this aircraft are quite long, since its first flight, the AN-225 has set 240 world records. This is a unique case in aviation and is, in fact, a record itself. This thing is not exactly an airplane, but it deserves a place on our list. The Caspian Sea Monster. It was an experimental wing ship. That means it used air force reflected from the surface of the earth or water to stay in the air. Formally, it was a ship, as it could fly at an altitude of only a few meters. But it looked more like an amphibian, and only pilots could fly it. A pretty complicated system, right? For a long time, it was the heaviest plane in the world. When it was empty, it weighed 240 tons. That's like 60 elephants. And it took 10 engines to get this thing in the air, five on each side but it still had enough speed to get from New York to Washington in half an hour. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.